I used to be a very angry, combative individual when I was younger. The minute I told myself I turned 18, I said, yo, it's up for anybody. I'm fighting. It's mm. up. As I, I'm slapped, I don't care if I'm in a church building. Mm. And it was, it was up for people inside the church. It was up for people outside the church. It didn't matter who you were. You could have been a big gangbanger. You could have had a gun on you. It was up for you. You could have been a pastor with a Bible on you. It was up. For, it was up for everybody. Where does that come from? Like, where does that anger come from? Yeah, it came from a number of places. Like, it came from me being very upset that my mom died. You know, like my mom. How, how old were you? Fifteen. Fifteen. So it's going on twenty years. That's, that's a cr that she been dead. critical age to lose her too. You know what I mean? It's she passed away. And I just, I was just super angry. I was, I felt entitled that dad, my mom's supposed to stay with me. Mm. So I was so angry with, angry with the world. I was just really angry. And I was angry with God at a young age. Cause I felt like I got, got introduced to the spiritual realm, but then got introduced to my mom leaving me. Mm. So, so it's like, God, you're introducing me to something, but then you're taking my mom away. I believe in your supernatural grace. So what is going on? Angry. So when your mom passed, do you feel like you grieved well? Like, did you, how did you process that? Do you feel like you properly worked through that even now? Now I'm better. Now I'm better. Um, but like when she first passed, me and my brothers, everybody's, finding their way on how to cope with the number one nurturing person that was in your life. You feel me? That person's gone. So we all had to talk to our dad that wasn't really a talkative person. So it, 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 it just challenged you at a very early age, you know? It, cha it challenged me. It challenged me a lot. And I was just like, yo, I don't think I can do all this, you know? So for me to rather deal with it, it was easy to be angry. Yeah. So that was like a coping mechanism because it was so easy to do. You didn't have to think about it. You could just get angry. Some people get angry. Some people get promiscuous. Some people backslide. People get these things. But nobody never put it in their minds and hearts knowing that, like, listen, I'm renewed in my heart. I'm renewed in my thoughts. If I'm a new creature in Christ, you know, because there's no condemnation who are in Christ Jesus. So I wait, I got to be this individual. And once I, I realized when I got older, like probably four or five years ago was the first time, I, three years ago was the first time I didn't grieve that, that my mom was gone. Mm. There was a level of healing that I got internally at the root of who I was. And I said, yo, I'm not grieving my mom. Mm. I'm Like I'm more so rejoicing because I remember two months before my mom passed. Um, I don't know why this is shifting Yo, this way, but. God, God is just bringing yeah. this up right now, you know what I mean? We start off talking about battle rap now. Now yeah. we have a therapy session, you know what I mean? For real. Was it, was it like a sudden thing or? No, she, no. she caught cancer probably two to three, two or three years or two years okay. before. But in that process, my mom and dad was splitting up. Wow. So. Could you imagine you having a third of your stomach taken out? You you separating from your husband. Now you're in a different church. My dad's in, uh, mind you, my dad was a pastor slash bishop in his in my grandfather church. So all, all this is going on. So my mom, we felt like yo, God healed my mom from cancer. Oh, she don't got cancer no more. We lit back in 2020, two, 2022, um, 2002. So, but my mom still never forgave my dad. So she's still in the process of separating. So we were like, okay. Then she got cancer again, but it spread all over her body and she moved in with my grandfather. This is when I told you God before how he um, opened my spiritual eyes. So I remember me and my younger brother, Frankie, he's born on the same day as my mom and my oldest cousin, had us in my grandfather's basement, my grandfather's big basement. And in one of the rooms, he said, yo, we're going to pray. 
He said, you believe your parents could get back together? I said, yeah, but I'm a mama's boy. So I was like, whatever my mom wants, but I believe they can. And he said, Frankie, you believe? He said, yeah, I believe it. So we started praying. And all of a sudden, my cousin had like a gift when he was to see like figures and like demons and like angels and stuff. He was just like, he's seen a presence of four big things leave the room. But I kid you not, when we opened our eyes, the room felt like illuminated. So I'm fit. Like I'm 15 and I remember this like as if this happened two hours ago. Mm-hmm. So five minutes after we prayed, my twin brother's calling me, Paito, Paito. And I'm like, yo, what's going on? Yo, mom want to talk to you. So I get in the door, I said, Bubba, she said, she want to talk to you. So she said, yo, Paito, close the door. Let me holler at you. That's how I like, my mom was, grew up in the hood, so she was very ghetto. She was like, yo, let me talk to you. Let me holler at you. So I'm like, all right, what's good, mom? What up? She just like, yo, I'm gonna ask you a question. So when she's talking to me, she's very bony. She's she's getting ready to pass away and her voice is gone. So she only could talk in her high register because she's losing her, her larynx. So she's like, can I, can I ask you a question? I remember. I said, what's up, mom? Do you think me and your dad should get back together? I said, huh? And then something immediately spoke to me, said, don't tell her what you did. Man, I felt that. I felt that just now. I said, huh? Hmm. I said, don't tell my mom what we did. So I'm, my heart's racing now. Because I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. She said, call Frankie for me. Frankie is born on my mom's birthday. And he really want my parents to get back together. So... His nickname is Baby. So I said, yo, Baby, yo, come up here. Call my little brother. I said, whatever you do, don't tell mom what we did. I said, don't tell mom what we did. Don't. So he was like, but what, what made you say that? Something in my ear. I kid you not. Like right here in my right ear was telling me, don't tell her what we did. It kept on repeating that in my ear. My mother's like, all right. So my little brother came out the room and said, yo, you see, you see, we just prayed for her. We just prayed for mom and dad to get back together. And she's about to die. And look at that. I said, all right. And next morning, I get up, you know, but when I peek my head in the, in the room, who's sleeping on her hospital bed? Her and my dad. Yo, bro, I could cry right now, bro. Cause I remember I'm peeking my head like this. I woke up, I woke all my brothers up. I said, yo, get up. I said, yo, get up. I slapped them all up. And we all looked at each other like, yo, what? So the next morning, I remember that one, my mom wanted us to be out the hood. My dad went to go look for a house. It's like, everything happened so fast. And right then and there, like my dad went to go look for us to get a house. We couldn't buy the house, but we was able to rent to own. So boom, we, we got it like literally that week. Mm-hmm. I kid you not. My mom sat in the house. She said, all right, I'm, I'm going to be in that room, y'all. And y'all going to take care of me. She saw the house that we was living in, mm-hmm. getting ready to move as a family, right? But a day before that, I, my hand of God. My mom woke up, and this is when the Lord introduced me to deliverance and the spiritual realm. So I'm walking. I'm, I wake up. My dad said, Paito, you up? I said, yeah. He said, you walk ahead of me. Mom needs to use the bathroom. So I'm holding my mom's hand, right? Holding my mom's hand. So as I'm holding my mom's hand, she like, yo. So my mom's very brittle. Like She's skinny and then skinny. Mm-hmm. If she coughs, you could see all her veins. Mm-hmm. That's how, like, crazy my mom was yeah. looking. Yeah. You know, hopefully my testimony I'm about to share with you guys really bless you with the power of forgiveness. Um, so I, I walk ahead of my mom. So there's six steps, a platform, then 12 steps. And my grandfather's door, then the bathroom. So I, we get to the first platform. And I hear my mom beating up my dad. Boom, 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 boom. I turn around, I'm like, what's going on? But this lady needs help walking down the stairs. That's how brittle she is. Like, if she trips, 
she could break a bone. All I hear is like a grown man getting beat up. I turn around, my mom came back. She said like this, call my dad. I said, oh. And then her, her eyebrows went like this, like really high. This was so tight. This was so tight like this, and this stretch all the way out. And it says, oh, my dad said Nadine, that's my mom's name. Nadine, like that, Nadine. And the demon, and I'm gonna just say it, Frank, excuse my language, but I'm gonna just be Frank, cause the context. Yo, oh, we taking this bitch to hell with us. And it was a deep voice, and it was like you heard voices with it. My dad said, whoa. So my, my dad used to work deliverance back in the day. So when he seen it with my mom, he said, whoa, babe. And he said, she's not here. You mother F is praying. I remember because we were praying. My dad didn't know us. Dad didn't know that we prayed. You mother, it's time to take this B-I-T-C-H to hell. Start beating up my dad. Boop, 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 boop. Yo, bro, I could cry. Yo. Right before I could knock on my grandfather's door, my grandfather pulled the door open. He said, relax. I know. Pulled his chair out, sat down, started praying. Then my dad said, yo, who's in the house? My aunt Diane was in the house. He said, pull up Isaiah 53, Psalms 56, Psalms 46, Psalms. He said, I'm not telling you to read this because it's going to cast the spirit out. You got to build your faith in the word. You got to build yourself in your most holy faith. You got to build yourself. He said, because we're about to get into spiritual warfare. So fill mm -hmm. yourself up. And I'm looking, I said, oh, shoot. I watched my mom jump from the sixth step and then watch her jump to the back to the fifth step. I said, oh, oh, shoot. I said, whoa, that's not my mom. And the demon said, yeah, it be, it's 400 of us. Mind you, my little brother is still sleeping and my twin, but I, they, they start waking up one by one. Now, I've learned when I got older, the demon kept on looking at us and kept on waving his hand and kept on like me mugging me. So I'm like, why me mugging me? Mm, like that, that to me, I remember. But when my little brother got up, it screamed and held onto the banister of the, um, the stairs. No, you mother effer. You that. You that mother effer that was praying with your brother mm -hmm. downstairs. I never told my mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yo, that, that we can... That's just such a powerful truth and powerful testimony about just how powerful prayer really is. Yeah. Like when you're really praying, when you're really doing the spiritual warfare, like it's doing real damage in the spiritual atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize that. Like if people really understood that truth, and took that as a reality, like, yo, I'm going to war right now. You know what I mean? And they prayed that way. Bro, this would be a, a whole different scene right now out here. You know what I mean? But people don't understand the, the power of prayer. Listen. That's, that's, that's powerful. Yo, when I mean to tell you, I said, what? And my dad said, Frankie, come here. My little brother, Frankie. Got the walking, that demon grabbed that banister, said, No, it's with him. He's with him. He said, Who's with him? The son of man. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Come on now. And sorry, y'all. Nah, don't apologize, bro. This this is supposed to come out right now. Whoever yeah. here listens to this right now is supposed to hear this. I haven't spoken about this in like a few months. This is usually I try to share. Time got a point. Yo, we start out talking about battle rapping. You know? Yeah. This, this is where and the Lord wants to take it. Let it flow, bro. Yeah. And what happened? Yeah. So uh, my mother, my 
mother, we start praying, and then my dad says, I'm going to get my wife back. And then and my dad said, yo, read this scripture right here. And one of the scriptures said, all power belongs to God. The demon kept on, I remember the demon kept on saying powder, powder. He said, no, no there's no D there. There's a, there's a power, it says power. And then, and then my dad said, I, I rebuke. And you know, sometimes things happen straightway and some things take a little tarrying. And we tarried, my uncles came, my aunts came, and we all, they all got to praying. And, and then my mom just started crying. She threw up. And when she threw up, I remember she threw up in this pink bin, little bin, throw, throw, container, and it was green and brown, and, but it never mixed, never mixed. It was like green and brown, but in those two, whatever it was, it never mixed. My dad took it, prayed over it, and then dumped it in the toilet and flushed it. My dad said that's a form of deliverance too. And, and my dad prayed over her head. And when my dad prayed, prayed for her, my, my mom was able to, she was just like, Jesus is Lord. She started crying. She said, yo, it was so dark. But she said, I got running to your voices. That's all I heard. And she was just like, yo, I forgive you so much to my dad. And then two months later, and this happened in August of 2020, of 20, of 2004, and she died October 12, 2004. Wow. And, you know, God gave me so much peace because the reason why I said that story, because I remember my twin brother went through something where he was about to kill himself but a demon some demons overtook him and we started doing a deliverance service at his crib and and the demon said okay here comes the two generals he was talking about my dad and my spiritual father my, my pastor He's, he said oh we're gonna take it and look what the demon said and this gave me so assurance so much assurance he said oh we're gonna take your punk a son with us because we couldn't took it to my dad we couldn't took it b-i-t-c-h wow. and then i said that to my um my bishop my bishop said did y'all hear that the demon just confirmed that they don't have your mother mm -hmm. and you know what else is standing out to me it's just like how cowardly demons are how cowardly the enemy is because yeah. they try, you know, they, it always says in the Bible that the, the, the enemy waits for an opportune time, time, right? He he. That's why he attacks when we're weak, when we're tired, when we're yeah. sick, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, your your mom was at her weakest point probably physically, and that's when they, they were like, yo, we're going to get her right now. We're going to try to get yeah. her right now, you know what I mean? But that's so powerful that God just orchestrated yeah. it, that all y'all were there together, and it just became a t testimony. You know what I mean? And now it's becoming a testimony to anybody that's going to hear this right now. You know, I just wanted to share with you, if you're dealing with unforgiveness, if you're dealing with unforgiveness and if you're dealing with, um, you're dealing with things that is hard in your heart, you're dealing with anger, you're dealing with um, pride, but mainly unforgiveness. God really wants to release you. Amen. Release you from unforgiveness. Because it be it, it could it it could create chronic um, diseases in your body. Man. It could create you having so much stumbling blocks. It could it could it could literally create a glass ceiling in your life where you can see your next level, but you can Amen. never pierce through. Amen. It could Amen. be a gl glass through the threshold that you like. Why well, can never persevere? Like why well, can never like prevail against this is because you have unforgiveness blinding your eyes and making you spiritually numb to the things of god and yeah, that bro what, i just want to second that i mean that's that's really what yeah, god's been talking flow. to me about a lot too is about for, unforgiveness that's really the thing that's e even believers that's really was was blocking their growth in the yeah. lord you know what i mean and the picture he gave me was look 
in John 7, 38, Jesus talks about, you know, he who believeth in me, in him will flow rivers of living water, right? Rivers of living water are supposed to flow forth from us. And the picture God gave me was, you know, the Holy Spirit comes in like living water. And he gave me mm. this picture of the water, like a waterfall just pouring into us, mm. right? The way that God designed it is for this living water to flow into us, flow through us, and then flow out of us. That's how it's supposed to work. But the problem is he showed me unforgiveness and he showed me when we hold on to unforgiveness, it's like a dam that you build up within yourself and you're blocking the flow of that living water. What happens to that water? It just, it starts storing up. It's not flowing through you anymore. It's not flowing out of you. It's not flowing into anybody else. And that water, once what happens to water once it just kind of builds up and stagnates? It just stagnates and then after a while it starts stinking. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that and then it just comes out in your actions as bitterness, as resentment, Become unkindness. No, exactly. None of the fruits of the spirit are flowing out of you anymore. You know what I mean? Yo, you gotta save this live, bro. I wanna share this. I wanna I share this later, bro. What? You gotta save this, bro. You gotta save this one. I really don't. I really don't. Bro, it's it's not about it's not about you though. You know what I mean? It's like let let the Lord use it. Let the Lord use it. Somebody out there gonna hear this message. Somebody, somebody got somebody that they need to forgive, that God's going to touch them with this testimony. God is so powerful, man. I just, just, you, I mean, that testimony is so powerful because it just brings out into the open the reality of the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. it, it, I want to pray with whoever's on this line and with you here. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I, I humble myself in your presence and... I thank you for how you are and why you are in my life. I pray, God, that you forgive me and you forgive D.Y. and you watch over him, protect him. I'm asking from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Lord, those who are here under the sound of my voice and that is on this live, I pray, God, that you will clean their eyes with this up. You'll wash their hearts and make it white as snow. Yes. You'll purify their steps, Lord, because you said you, their, our steps are ordered by you. So, so, Father, order our steps so we don't walk in the potholes of this life, oh God. Father, I pray that you will come and realign us like a chiropractor realigns a body back into place. So realign our thoughts back in place. Realign our hearing. Realign our speech. Amen. Realign the way we think and our processes. Oh God, realign us back to your word always. Realign us, oh God, so we could be astute with sharing testimonies after testimonies. Oh God, realign us and keep us in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, that we will never fall away from the faith and we'll always find our way back to you, God. For the sound of my voice, Father, I pray for that gentleman and that woman that is dealing with the heartache that they can't let go, Father. I pray that you would deliver. I pray that you will set them free. I pray that you will keep them in Jesus' name. I love you in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. All chains break free in Jesus' name. Jesus' amen. name. Yo, I yeah. appreciate you, brother, man. Yeah, DM, Thank you for inviting me on. So we can chop it up Word on the up. flip side, yo. Word up. That was powerful, bro. appreciate you, bro. All right, man. God bless, man. We've been praying for you. Peace. Love you, family. Peace, brother. Love you too, man. Peace, peace.